I'd stop what you're doing because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you used to. Today's episode of Geek Geek is brought to you by Domain.com. Hey, everybody. Hi. Welcome back to continuing live coverage from Japan. That isn't live. That's right. Today, we're going to thank ANA and Okinawa Prefecture for bringing us out to Japan. We had As a good time. As you guys know, that's why we went out. And uh -huh. uh, we saw some awesome stuff, which we've been talking about in the last couple of episodes. This is our... Uh, second to last one, we've got more coming for you. By the way, I forgot to mention something. Yes. Um, we talked the other day about a and &A and how nice they are. Yeah. And really the fact that we honestly recommend you should fly a and &A if you're going to Japan. Yes. Because of the service, if nothing else. Um, but you know what we didn't talk about? What's that? The food on the A&A &A flights. We did not. It's ridiculous. It's like the flight attendants are all chefs or something. Yeah. Because they bring you these trays full of stuff. Yeah, it's like, well, one thing about Japan food in general is that they have several dishes yeah. as part of the meal. Lots of delicately Lots of little, prepared. you know, things. So um, that, that happens on A&A. &A. So yeah. you get, you know, this main course, but then you have all of these other things going on. And everything is spectacularly presented. They give you either a choice of a Western menu or a Japanese menu. Right. Even though the Western menu still has Japanese influence. Yeah. But, like, it's, but it's better like, for people like me. Right. It's like um, steak versus fish. Yep. Yeah. But, but it's, here was what was cool, okay? Because if you ride business class or first class anywhere, um, you're going to get served meals. But yeah. here's what was really awesome was they had a whole menu of things that you could order just at any time. Well, I think that happens. Um, I don't. I, I I've don't not know. seen that on other flights. We, I, what when I mean we went is, to Germany, did we? What I mean no, on British Airways, yeah. I don't think so. What no. I mean is, hmm. you could get a cheeseburger. Yeah, you can. <laughs> anytime during the flight, or you could get a bowl of soba. Soaky soba. Soba noodles. <laughs> anytime. Uh, they didn't actually, I, yeah, they had some you kind get, of noodle. You like could get ice cream anytime, as much as you wanted. Ice cream yep. and fruit. You just like, right as you're taking off, I'd like some ice cream and fruit. <laughs> I'll bring it to you. <laughs> and like every 30 minutes, just bring the ice cream. Yeah, they'll they bring it to it. you all day long and, and all sorts of awesome food. And they'd have been happy to do it. You did not try that cheeseburger. I was shocked. Yeah, that's true. I was too stuffed from everything else that they kept bringing me. <laughs> anyway, McDonald's. speaking yeah. of stuffed... <laughs> I don't we know how visit, you're transitioning to that. <laughs> we went to visit Takatomi Island. <laughs> so Takatomi Island is another island in the Okinawa Prefecture, just to set it up again. Right off of Ishigaki. Yes, uh, we took a ferry from Ishigaki to Takatomi. Now, Takatomi... First, we took an airplane to Ishigaki. Correct. And then the ferry was like 10 or 15 minutes. That's it. You yeah, just hop on the ferry, go across, bang. You're on Takatomi. Now, the main thing you need to know about Takatomi is it is a preserved island. Yeah. This is uh, kept in the structure and everything is preserved as it was Hundreds back of when. years ago. Um, now, they they do not build... In fact, in fact we went... We, while we were there, we were, we were going by one of the old houses downtown. Yeah. And I asked the guy, I go, by the way... Who builds these houses? Because there's only like 300 people on the island. Right. So I was thinking, is there like one guy yeah. who's the, the house the house, house builder, builder yeah. or something? So I just asked, I go, I go, hey, who builds these houses? He goes, that house has been there for 11 generations. 900 years or something. I was like, oh, Ridiculous. I guess uh, nobody, nobody builds, builds houses. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. I mean, they literally... Um, they they have a waiting list for coming in. If you want so, to come to the island. A lot of people want to go live on the island, but they do not allow any more than 300 to live there. So people have to die or move off in order for somebody to come in. So there's this... I, it's just amazing. Um, the gas station is only open 30 minutes a day. We yeah, that's right. We were talking to one of our, our drivers, and she was like, yeah, we all line up at the gas station whenever you, we need gas. We <laughs> all line up with, like, the five cars on the... On yeah. The, all the roads are unpaved. They're mm -hmm. all just white, gravel Sand, kind of yeah. roads. And that's because the primary mode of transportation on the island... Water buffalo. <laughs> so 
I, I don't know how And they have are... right of way over anyone else. Yes. That is the amazing thing. A car's going, a water buffalo's there. Car's got to back, back it, up. it up. And they're not, I mean, they're not two-lane streets. They're one street. I mean, uh, it... So one thing that you there's so much to say about Takatomi Island. <laughs> I I actually right. really like the this streets place. were lined by white walls, white stone walls that are hand, hand stacked. stacked. Yeah, like no mortar, no nothing. And uh, we actually did a little video we about um, when we stayed on the island. Uh, Take a look at that. Hand. Yeah, and this is a spectacular resort. It's only about a year old. And uh, so we're going to show you what one of the rooms looks like. So we've got different kinds of rooms here, but this one is just amazing because it's very traditional Japanese. Um, so, all of these uh, walls are built to just kind of for privacy purposes, but you'll notice that there's stone, but it's all just laid on here. We could actually take this thing apart, you see? It's hand stacked. It's, yeah, it's hand stacked. And it's all perfectly balanced. Look how much it is all over the property. It's amazing. So this is actually my private bungalow. Callie's is over there somewhere. Uh, and so we'll go in here. I'm going to give you guys the tour. You'll notice that as we come in, there's a little, there's a little retaining wall here. And the purpose of this wall is twofold. One, it's for some privacy because as you'll see in a minute, we have a wall of windows. And two. This is to keep out evil spirits because they believe that evil spirits can travel in a straight line. They can't really make curves very well. So when you come in, you uh, if you were an evil spirit, you wouldn't get through here to get to the home. You'd hit your head and go out. Yeah, you hit your head. <laughs> now, and by the way, while he's doing that, all of these houses are, all of these bungalows are modeled after the traditional Okinawa, or I'm sorry, Takatomi uh, house. Yeah. So every house in Takatomi is modeled like this. Well, in not in uh, on Takatomi, the outside. Not in Takatomi, in this village. In this they're village. Like this. So there with the red roofs. There, there are different kinds of interiors, but what you're going to see right now is the traditional one. So. You're going to notice that from a seating arrangement standpoint out here, you're sitting down on the ground, Japanese style. It's got a very low table, chairs that are on the ground, and the whole interior is tatami mat. So there's a door right over there on the side. That's the normal entrance door, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. But you always take off your shoes before you enter a, a Japanese household, not just Japanese, most Asian households. So we're going to take off our shoes here, and then we're going to go in. And if you were here to experience this... I can't, hold on, I can't take my shoes yeah, off and hold the camera. you got to your shoes off. Okay, there you go. If you were here to experience this, what I would tell you, you know, since you're not, is uh, it, it's kind of squishy, it's soft, it's... Uh, this was the precursor, if you will, to carpeting. So, uh, as you know, most Japanese uh, people will sit like this, kind of a reverse Indian style or, or, or Indian style. And if you did that on just a wood floor or stone floor, it's a lot harder than this. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, on this side, we've got the bathroom area, obviously. This is the actual bath slash shower. Um, one thing that I think is really neat is... I like the way they have a drain right outside the tub. So there's a tub and there's this whole grated area. So if you had any spillover, it goes down into the drain. So that's nice. Um, over here, we've got a beautiful sink. Uh, it's just gorgeous attention to detail, isn't it? Little shelves up here with glasses and hand towels. Um, uh, the sink is very nice. The there are all kinds of things that you might need: toothbrushes, brushes, brushes, shaving uh, kit, bath salts, um, all kinds of stuff. And over on this side, you've actually got a hair dryer, Kleenex, and this is interesting. It's actually a fold-out mirror, so you ladies can uh, do your makeup and stuff, or maybe it might be easier for guys to shave with or whatever. 
Okay, so the resort itself was awesome. You just caught a little glimpse of the stone oh, wall and the, and, the, and the rooms and stuff. Yeah. But what we didn't show you was the other places, the other things like the pool. Oh, it was beautiful. Humongous. And it was heated. Everything about this place was just beautiful and um, impeccably done. They had a, a, a place where I went and watched the sunrise. Yeah. Uh, and you could, and it overlooked the entire, the entire resort yeah, from up on a hill. Exactly. Magnificent. You know, one thing, especially at night, specifically about this resort is their attitudes. Um, they are actually allowed to quote unquote break the rules there. Uh, the rest of Japan. It, there's a very formal they're, they're very formal you have to follow the rules if you want to request something that's not in the rules you don't get it you know that's kind of the the process in Japan because they have to um, as part of their culture but here at the Hoshinoya resort they're allowed to break the rules and make the customer they're encouraged happy. to they are encouraged to so that was kind of refreshing yeah it was very cool uh, uh, one other quick thing before yeah. we take a break and we have some more stuff to show you, but just random information. There are 23 students who go to elementary school there, just to give you perspective on how small the island is. And there's like 14 in the junior high. Right. And there is no high school. Yeah, if you got to go to Ishigaki. You got go to get on the ferry. You got to go to Ishigaki to go to high school. And unfortunately, this often splits families up because yeah. the mother will go off with the kids to high school or they won't go to high school at all and they'll stop their education. Yeah. Hey, Callie. Yes. Guess what? What? I don't know. I was just saying that because we needed a good transition to tell you about Domain.com, <laughs> who's sponsoring today's episode. You know what? I was actually thinking I might move to Takatomi Island and start a blog all about how much I love Takatomi. Well, if you did, you could register a domain at Domain.com and, and you could sure use coupon everything. code GEEKBEAT and you get 20% off. 20%. That's more than it used to be. And I don't know how long that's going to last. Not but only on your domain. You could also get hosting with it, too. You can. So you could do your whole blog with hosting and a domain name, 20% off, coupon code GeekBeat, domain.com. What do you think is the right domain for me if I move to Takatomi Island and do a blog all about it? Let us know. Leave a comment. I think it should be islandbikinis.com. Hell yeah. I don't think there were many uh, bikinis in Takatomi Island. Well, you have to do something about that. <laughs> All right, let's move on to something uh, that was very, very interesting. Yeah. And we were looking forward to, before we even went out there, the mensa weaving. Now, this is a, a traditional style of weaving that's been around for hundreds or thousands of years. How many? I don't know. I don't even know. My grandfathers were just like newts in a stream when they started mensa weaving. Okay. But you will see mensa weaving woven stuff like when yeah. you see the uh, the ladies with their uh, what are those those yes. they robe the kimono yes. when you see like a kimono those and have they have a thing wrapped around their waist or hanging around their neck That's they the are mensa weaving. hand woven very very tightly and they have these machines you Actually, can see Actually take a look I, yeah. I showed you it. Yeah. Place the left. Okay. <laughs> I do this. All right, this is called mensa weaving, guys. I press and then I switch feet and then one, two. Okay. Okay. Go back. I go back. Press. I press, then I switch feet and then one, two to keep it. Uh, uh, this is extremely uh, tight knit. Okay, so this is called mensa weaving. I just a couple of things. This takes this whole process to complete a project takes a month. For a visual representation of what it takes, um, this is every piece of the pie, and this is where we are at the moment <laughs> doing this <laughs> weaving part. I mean, it takes it takes them. They individually put all of these threads in through this machine. That's got to take forever. They have to feed them through all the between all these little metal wires. Two. So the mensa weaving, um, this is the special part of it. Uh, you see these designs. This is a five and a four. 
Um, together, these two things mean infinity. And if you count the squares, there are nine squares, and nine to them means heart. So we will be together forever. We will love forever. And so what, this, what happens is the women in the village, they will um, give their men, the person they want to marry, a uh, scarf or a piece of this weaving, um, a, a piece with of material five, with the five and the, and the four. four. And then the men give the women a necklace if they want to marry them back. <laughs> Something like that. I, I, I may have tiny details wrong, but I'm going to keep going. All right, so that's that's what you did that. You, yeah, you made I did that. This. And it was, it was just really impressive, um, the amount of work that they put into something like this. It took us a while, and it was hot in there, very, very, very humid. Hot. Of course, she, she grew up in it. Yeah. But they make this for like, they sell it for a hundred bucks? No, it was like two. Right? Okay, 200? you could get one that was, I don't know, six or eight feet long for like $200. But the thing is, it would take like a month to make it, okay? It takes 30 to 45 days to make these if things. You do the, if you do the math on the hourly rate, yeah. these people would be in poverty. And we are talking about skilled craftspeople with a very specific use tool. Just, yeah. it's amazing, it's like amazing. It is. You guys put so much work into making the knives, but and you know, no you matter can't... how much you charge for it, you'll never, yeah. you'll never have a decent wage. You have to do it because love. you love the art. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was, it was very impressive to to listen to her and watch her work. So speaking of other that. things that were impressive to listen to and watch and that we loved, we're going to leave you with this. It was our. Our driver, our water buffalo cart driver, <laughs> sure serenading you. us on his sanchi. Indeed.